My dad's entitled friend told me I should give my baby up for adoption because I'm a terrible mother. I snapped and humiliated him publicly, and now my dad is demanding I apologize, plus all three updates. I was 18 and in college when I first met my dad's friend Harold, and he immediately acted very condescending towards me. The first thing he said once he heard I was studying medicine was, Oh, so you want to save the world. How sweet, little, dumb 18-year-old thinks the world can be saved. My dad laughed in response, and when I gave him a death stare for it, he doubled down and said that what Harold said was funny. From that day on, every time I met Harold, he'd make comments about me. He'd tell me my outfit looked awful, he called the books I like to read childish and stupid, and when he heard about my past in volleyball, he said that I probably only liked it because I could wear the spandex around the boys. My dad never stepped in to defend me either. The final straw came the day Harold interrupted a barbecue to say, that's not how you cook, let a real man show you. He physically pushed me out of the way and took over. After that, I started making an effort to avoid him, and I was successful for six entire years. Well, yesterday was my father's girlfriend's birthday, and I went there with my fiancé and our six-month-old son. Harold was there, and even though I hadn't seen him in years, he still talked to me as if I was a dumb child. My child spent most of the afternoon sleeping, and however he woke up hungry. I went to breastfeed him, and when I came back, Harold was joking about how I was probably a terrible mother. He started interrogating me about my parenting and calling me a bad mom in front of everyone. I finally snapped when he asked if I'd thought about giving my baby up for adoption. I yelled at him, asking him if he knows so much about parenting. Why does his ex-wife have full custody of his child? I asked him what kind of man tries to sleep with his brother's girlfriend, and as a cherry on top I told him to lose some weight. With that gut, no one wonder no woman wants to touch you with a 10-foot pole, were my exact words. I left with my fiancé and son, and on the drive home I was bombarded with texts from my dad, telling me to come back and apologize to Harold right now. I told him there was no way that was happening, and asked him if he had any idea what Harold said to me. He yelled that of course he did, and asked why the hell would I get mad over him offering to make me a sandwich. My jaw dropped agape, and I started laughing my absolute butt off. You see, while Harold and I were having the altercation, my father was in the bathroom, and so he didn't hear anything that was said. I presume all he heard was me yelling, walking out and slamming the door behind me. Anyways, my dad asked me why I was laughing so much, and I told him no reason. He asked me again, and this time I told him Harold was lying. I said that I wasn't going to tell him anything, however, and he had to call Harold to find out for himself. I then went off on him for all the times he'd just blindly took Harold's side whenever he had upset me, and that it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if he didn't even call Harold, just blindly took his word and disregarded everything I'm saying right now. My dad then hung up, and I went to bed that night not hearing another thing from anyone. My fiancé did tell me he was extremely proud of me, however, because apparently my comments were not only badass, but also funny AF. I'm happy he thinks that. Update 1. I'll start by addressing the very frequent assumption that Harold has feelings for me. I really don't think that's the case. His comments always came out as annoying and condescending, but never explicit in a suggestive manner towards me. But I will say that your comments scared the crap out of me, and the fact that the general consensus was F Harold was weirdly heartwarming. I also want to add that, while I did regret what I said a little bit, I never doubted I'd done the right thing. I think most most of my regret came from the fact that my eight years of keeping the peace were over. It took some time for the relief to sink in. Truth be told, I've been wanting to do this since the barbecue incident, which was when I went from, I don't like that guy, to I can't stand that guy. Anyway, my father actually called Harold the day after I made my previous post. I was kind of pleasantly surprised by this from him. When confronted about what actually happened, Harold apparently went quiet. He took a minute or so to respond, before going, oh, I know. Harold went on to explain everything that actually occurred to my dad, who just listened without a word from what I know. Harold tried to twist the story as him being genuinely concerned about me being a mom so soon, and that he didn't think I knew what I was doing. He did apologize to my father. I don't buy any of what Harold was saying, though. The next day, my dad told me about the call. He said, even after finding out the actual truth, that I should forgive Harold for the honest misunderstanding. He also told me I should apologize, too, since I'd overreacted by telling Harold I hated him for such a small reason. Many of Harold's past comments were made with my father close by. It often happened in the middle of conversations with other people, so he'd be too distracted to register them. He also wouldn't notice them most of the time. My dad doesn't pay enough attention to anything that doesn't either concern or anger him, and he'll most likely forget it until he gets angry at something else later anyway. He's like a goldfish. We also have different definitions of what's offensive, so he'd never think they were a big deal. I told my father I wasn't exaggerating when I said I hated Harold, and that the adoption comment was far from being the only reason. I listed most of the condescending treatment and comments I could remember, 
including the ones from the party. He didn't remember any of them. I made it very clear that I'd hated Harold for years prior to the party and that I had nothing to apologize for. I then stated that I'm no longer coming to any events Harold is invited to. My father doesn't need to stop being friends with him or even stop inviting him to stuff, but he can no longer expect me to show up as well. I will ask him beforehand, and if he lies, I'll leave. My father called me dramatic, but I pointed out that I've been avoiding Harold for six years now and no one even noticed so it clearly wasn't a problem. It obviously didn't ruin my father's life. I'm not obliged to like his friends any more than he is to like mine. There was some back and forth, but he agreed to my terms. We spoke yesterday about something else, and he mentioned Harold was upset. I ignored that. I'm not going no contact with my father. Yes, I'm very well aware he's an eye hole, and I came really close to cutting times with him in the last few years, but I ultimately decided it wouldn't really fix anything. Maintaining my relationship with him has gotten a lot easier since I moved out, as we only see each other a couple times a month. He gets frustrated that I don't call or text much, but doesn't complain about it anymore. I don't see the point in going no contact with someone who no longer has any say in how I live my life. I'd rather just take note of what my father did wrong when I was growing up, and then make sure to raise my own kid differently. He's on thin ice, though, and has been for some time. He's not allowed to babysit, mostly because I don't trust him to spend more than an hour alone with a baby without falling asleep on the couch. I began pushing for him to start doing therapy back when I got pregnant, and he finally got started back in June. His behavior around me and my younger sister, who still lives between our very divorced parents, has improved a lot since, and I've made it clear to him that he won't be allowed near my son if he stops attending. This is the first time in my life my father has improved his behavior. It's hard to be hopeful, but I'm trying. And if I ever do go no contact with my father, it won't be because of Harold. So that's it. Overall, I'm glad I don't have to deceive anyone anymore. My relationship with my father is rocky, but I won't dwell on it. My main responsibilities are my son, my fiancé, and my job, and that's not changing anytime soon. Update 2. Openly avoiding Harold has been working pretty well. My father has been respecting my boundaries. Whenever he invites me and my husband over for lunch or dinner, I ask who else will be there. If Harold's coming, he tells me. He hasn't lied so far and doesn't use usually insist when I tell him I'm not coming. Since my last post, I've only seen Harold once, at my dad's birthday party a few months ago. Yes, I knew he'd be there. My father promised he'd tell him not to talk to me. Also, some of my father's friends' kids, most of whom I used to babysit, would be there. I hadn't seen them in a while, and I love them more than I hate Harold. I ended up spending most of the party with my son and the kids. Harold didn't talk to me at all, so I guess my father was true to his word. My husband and I did catch him staring at us a couple times, but I decided to ignore it. I caught my husband staring back once, and the walking marshmallow I married actually managed to look threatening. I love this man. You know who did talk to me? Harold's girlfriend. Yes, he has one now. She interacted with me twice. First, she came over to co over my son, before making a comment about how he needed a haircut. Ha ha ha, I already hate you. Later, she approached me and said, You're shy, aren't you? I said no. She laughed and said, Yeah, you're shy. She said all that in the same tone one would use to talk to a six-year-old. I managed to keep my expression schooled. Otherwise, I would have told her I'm not shy. I just chose to spend the whole party with the kids because they were better company than her and her annoying boyfriend. So yeah, based on both my interactions with her, Harold's girlfriend is insufferable. In other words, they're perfect for each other. I don't have much else to add. My father broke up with the woman he was dating last year and has a new girlfriend. She is not annoying or psychotic, and I actually really like her. They won't last a year. My relationship with my father is still not perfect, by the way but it has improved. He's actually started apologizing to me a lot more often. I don't know whether it's the therapy or the fact that motherhood has apparently made me terrifying, but I'll take it. And I'll give credit where it's due. He's a very good grandfather. I'm also glad my father is respecting this Harold boundary. I very much don't want this man in my life. Update 3. A few months later, everything had been going pretty well. My dad had actually been sticking to the boundaries I'd set around Harold, and for once, I wasn't dreading family events. I'd go to dinners, bring my fiancé and son, and we'd have a good time without any drama. I honestly thought I was done with Harold. Then came my dad's birthday. It was supposed to be a simple dinner, nothing too big, and I made sure to ask my dad if Harold was going to be there. He reassured me, yet again, that Harold wasn't invited. I felt relieved, especially since I didn't want to deal with him at all. So we went, and everything seemed fine. My dad was in a good mood, his new girlfriend was being sweet, and it was nice catching up with some family friends. But then, a few hours in, guess who waltzes through the door. Harold. And not just Harold. Harold. Drunk. I shot my dad a look, and he looked just as surprised as I was. He hadn't invited him. Turns out Harold had heard about the party through someone else and decided to show up unannounced. He was loud and obnoxious, acting like he was everyone's favorite person when most of the guests were clearly uncomfortable. I tried to stay as far away from him as possible, just keeping an eye on my son and talking with a few friends. I figured, worst case, we'd leave early if he got too unbearable. But as the night went on, Harold got worse. He started making snide comments to people 
mostly my dad, but I could feel his eyes on me the whole time. At one point, I overheard him drunkenly tell my dad, you should have brought someone else's kid instead of hers. At least then you'd have a chance at decent grandkids. I froze. I wanted to scream at him, but I stayed put, focusing on my son and fiancé. I thought if I ignored him long enough, he'd eventually shut up. Then, he tried to help. My dad was at the grill, and Harold, in all his drunken wisdom, decided he needed to show everyone how it was really done. He stumbled over, beer in hand, and physically shoved my dad out of the way. That's when things got dangerous. Harold, trying to flip burgers, knocked the entire tray of food onto the ground. Everyone was staring, including me. I was just waiting for my dad to do something, but instead, he tried to laugh it off like Harold was just being Harold. That was the final straw. I couldn't stand it anymore. I stormed over and yelled at Harold, telling him he needed to leave. He turned to face me, smirking like this was all some big joke. Oh, little miss knows best, huh? You think you're all grown up now with your perfect little family? I'd had enough. I snapped. Harold, I'm done with you. You've been nothing but an arrogant, disgusting jerk for years. And if you think I'm going to let you treat me or my family like this anymore, you're delusional. Get the hell out of here. Harold just stared at me, not even trying to defend himself this time. My dad finally stepped in, and for once, he was on my side. He turned to Harold and said, you need to leave. Now. Harold looked genuinely shocked. He tried to laugh it off, asking my dad if he was serious, but my dad didn't budge. I said, leave, Harold. You've crossed too many lines and you're not welcome here anymore. Harold left, stumbling out the door with his tail between his legs. After that, my dad apologized to me, and I could tell he was actually serious. He admitted that he had been wrong to let Harold get away with so much for so long. For the first time, he chose me over Harold. It wasn't just words this time either. My dad hasn't spoken to Harold since. 